We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Ship Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepap. We are here in Nyeri County at Kewathanji location, very, very near Kagumo Teachers College. And we've heard there's a very hardworking lady, so let's go and meet her. Uh, nice to be in your farm, Moses and Cecilia. We are very, very happy. This is a lovely, lovely farm. Now, how long have you lived here, Moses? For 80 years. Uh -huh. Ah, Cecilia, and how long have you been married? 16. Oh, wow. 16? Yes. And wow. how many children do you have? I have three. Three? Yes. And is there, is there anyone among those who love farming like you do? Yes. There is one who is Nelly. Oh, how old is she? She's 11. Aha, that's nice. Oh, great. So what are you growing here? I grow tomatoes, vegetables, and peppers. These are pit -pit Uh Aha. -huh. Mm -hmm. Are they doing well? Sometimes they do well. Other times they are not all that good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Moses, what do you have here in the Shamba? I have uh, a cow. You have a cow? Yes. Just one? No. Mm -hmm. Three. Three? Yeah. <laughs> How are they doing? It is not do good. Why? Why? What is the problem? A uh, cow does not produce enough milk. Ah. Uh -huh. And what else? Shed is not good. The shed, the yeah. cattle shed? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Is there any other problem? There is problem of enough water. Aha, uh -huh. water to farm? Yes. Ah, okay. Oh, it seems like we have a lot of shipping up to do right here, but you're not alone. We've got experts who are going to work with us to make sure that you are truly shipped up. Yes. Okay? Yes. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 <laughs> Cecilia and Moses have a lot of work for us to do. First, let's look at their soil with Paul from Mayor. We've worked with you around the farm and you've seen for yourself some crops. What is your general observation of what you've seen? The performance is not very bad, but basically they need first of all to do their uh, soil testing so that they can understand exactly what is happening in their soil. Mm -hmm. And tell us, what exactly is a soil test? A soil test is a way in which a farmer can be able to know what is available for the plant to use. Why does a farmer have to do a soil test? A farmer needs to do the soil test so that he can be able to know the amount of nutrients in the soil. And at what particular time should a farmer notice that the soil needs a test? He can check on the, the color of the leaves. Once the, the color changes, maybe from green to yellow to purple, such colorations, he, he can be able to identify and say there is a problem in the soil. So at that time, he needs to do the soil test. To collect a soil sample, take soil from four or five different places around your shamba. We have the soil. What next? Uh, now we are supposed to mix this soil uniformly. Mm -hmm. Then from after mixing it completely, we need to, to isolate now a sample that will be taken to the lab for analysis. Mm -hmm. When you have collected the soil, mix it together on a sheet. Put some of the mixed soil into a clean plastic bag. Label the bag with your name, location, telephone number and address. What about wet soil in the liver? You are supposed to, to take soil when it's dry. Wet soil is not the best for analysis. How often will I need to do this test? With the kind of farming that you are, you are doing, the beans, maize, cabbages, potatoes and the others, mm -hmm. you are supposed to do it once in three years. While we wait for the soil test results to come back, the Facebook farmers needed some questions answered. 
While Tony is doing that, let's see what Cecilia's water problem is. Cecilia? Yes? Uh, I've had a look around and I've noticed you have water. So where do you get it from? This is a piped water. Mm -hmm. And I pay it per month. Oh, you pay per month? Yes. Uh huh. Mm. Is that what you use to water your vegetables? No. Why? It is illegal. So how do you water your plants? With this water mm -hmm. that I use to, to rinse the ditches, mm -hmm. I put it in a bucket mm -hmm. so that I can take it to the vegetables. Ah, this is what you use to water yes. your vegetables? Yes. Wow. The test results are back and Paul will explain what they mean. Paul, you've got something to tell our farmers. First of all, is it good news or bad news? Uh, it's not bad news. Mm -hmm. Let's see it. Yeah. This is all what you have tested for your soil. Yes. And we have given you a remark. Okay. We are telling you your soil is just slightly acidic. It's not too much acidic, but slightly acidic. Mm. Meaning? And meaning that you have been using some, something that can add acid, acid. in your soil. Oh, yeah. Mm. Secondary, the nitrogen and carbon are also deficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. What that, does that mean? That means they have not been using uh, things like organic manure. Mm -hmm. in the Ashamba. That's why we have those two elements low. After <coughs> all that, what's the solution to their soil problem? We've given them the solution here. Mm -hmm. We first of all told them they should be using at least 10 tons of well decomposed manure. Well decomposed farmyard manure mm -hmm. that you can get from your cows, chicken, goats, sheep, all that. Direct from the nini or no, 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 it should not be direct. Mm. Oh, you need first of all to heap it somewhere else oh, so yeah. that it can decompose free. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I understand that. Is that all? That's not all. Yes. That will take care for nitrogen mm -hmm. and the carbon. Right. Then we want them to, to change the fertilizer they are using for planting because that is the one that is increasing that acidity slowly by slowly. They have been using DAP all through. But now we want them to change from DAP to mere Mazao 23, which is not increasing the acidity in the soil. Is that all you need to do? No. We've given you a general planting fertilizer and manure. Okay. But we have other ways in which you can supplement the rack, the, the, the racking nitrogen in the soil. For example, when you are planting beans, we have another fertilizer for you called Biofix, which is a biological fertilizer mm -hmm. that can help you to add a lot of nitrogen in your soil. Mm. Yeah. Biofix sounds interesting. Is it easy for farmers to apply it? Yeah, it's easy for farmers to use mm. and it's also affordable to the farmer. Wow, I think you should explain to us about Biofix practically. One packet of Biofix is enough for 15 kilograms of seed. Working in the shed, pour the seeds into a large container. Then, add the white powder to 300 milliliters of water and mix well. Add the water and powder mixture to the seeds and stir well. Then, add the black powder, which is Biofix, to the seeds. Stir until the seeds are coated with Biofix. Let the seeds dry in the shed. Plant as soon as possible in a well-watered bed. Moses said the cow was only giving him two liters of milk a day. We asked John from Coopers to come and tell us what is wrong. Wonderful to see you, John. Wow, yeah. It's wonderful. I can see you've been looking around. Now, tell us from your general observation. Yeah. What do you see and what do you think? When I was going aloud checking about the shed, I noted that the structures are poorly done. What do you recommend we do? We have a lot of work here to do. One, we need to do good construction of the cow shed, in which we shall define good sleeping places for our cows. We shall have a very nice milking para, well defined, with a trough, such that even when the cows are being milked, at least they can lick amino supplements. Also, we shall put a very good floor. As you can see, this one is uh, fine, it's a floor. Also, the troughs. We shall do away with all this and put up new troughs, well designed. 
such that the cows can be in a position to feed in a healthy, cleaner place. I was looking for the place of water. Mm. Oh yeah, it's there. Yes. Yes, we shall also use this one to construct that the cows can be in a position to drink healthy water, clean water from the mm -hmm. cow shed. Mm -hmm. I was also going down there and checking the calf pen. We shall put up a very good calf pen for the calf that yes. is already four months, mm -hmm. such that that calf can be in a position to have a good start of its life. The first thing to do is to take down the old shed so we can start building a new one following Cooper's advice. Now, Naomi, we've got... That is what I'm doing here. There's so much work to be done. Oh, my God. We've got lots to do. Naomi, find something to do. Cecilia gets water from the village water project but can't use it for her vegetables. Boniface is a natural resource expert and has come to tell Cecilia how to get more water. Boniface, you've had a look around Cecilia's homestead and the farm. Yes. Yeah, now uh, you've also noticed about her water problems. Yes. So what solutions would you give her? Cecilia, we have realized that the potential for the farm is very high, but what is limiting is uh, the water issue. Yes. So we can harvest water yes. from the roofs that we have seen around. Mm. And we are recommending that if you use guttering, you have a tank, yes. you'll be able to grow your vegetables yes. without any problem. Mm. Because I understand that you are also using some waste water from the kitchen to yes. do the farming, but that is also limiting. Mm. But okay. if you can harvest the water from the roofs that we have seen, Mm. you are able to grow your vegetables mm. and be able to sell because mm. the water that you are going to harvest will be enough to take you through the period that there is no rain. Mm. Yes. Mm. So now let's get to work and put up the gutters. Make sure your gutters are free from rust and do not leak. is looking great, is shaping up, but there's still more to be done. Right here on Shamba Shape Up. To receive all Shamba Shape Up leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We're still here in Nyeri County, shaping up the Shamba of Moses and Cecilia. Now, Naomi, I need to find an expert to help Moses and Cecilia on their cow feed. And I need to help Cecilia transplant her tomatoes, but I just don't know what to do. Naomi, why don't you call Sigenta? Bingo, here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See you later. Later. Oh. Now the cow shed is ready with good troughs and a proper floor. John is back to inspect. So where do we go from here? We start from the calf. The four months old calf needs supplementation in terms of minlos. Magric minlo brick, it's meant for a calf that is zero to six months and you'll enable the calf to have good nutrition supplementation as long as it's between zero to six months. When the calf gets older, you need to give it other supplements to make it into a good heifer. 18 months, that calf should be already being served. Mm -hmm. And what it requires, it's a powdery mineral supplements. And as Cooper's Moses, it shall be in a position to provide you with Macric Plus, okay. with heat enhancement, meant for the heifer, we will enable the heifer to come on heat on time when it's in calf until the time it will calf down. 
Okay. Wonderful. After the heifer, we shall now focus to the mother. Moses, yes. market super is meant for the dairy cows yeah. that are producing such that they can be in a position to produce okay. and also the most important thing is that the calf will come back on heat on time. Mm -hmm. And to increase production of milk, you know Moses now is on business of milk production. Yes. Yeah, the milk that will be produced we need it to be of good quality at the same time to be plenty of milk such that you can be in a position to feed the family with it at the same time sell for business purposes. Kupa Kula Gorod, we enable the cow to have good digestion, at the same time increase the production, and also the quality of the milk will be having the right density. With that, you'll be set to have a calf, a good heifer, and a producing cow. Okay. Yeah. And now for all of them, because you know they are relaxing in the shed, yes. it's good for us also to hang amino supplement for all of them. Mm -hmm. So this one, we shall be hanging it around the shed mm -hmm. where both of them, the cow and the mom and the kefir mm -hmm. and the calf can be in a position to access it. And socialize. And socialize okay. here, right. <laughs> the meeting Good. point. Good. For the calf, put a maclic mineral brick in the trough for it to leak. Give the heifer 200 grams of maclic plus every day or until it has had enough. For the cow, give Kupa Kula according to the amount of milk you get. Start by giving 100 grams and add more as the milk increases. Also, give the cow 4 tablespoons of Maklik Super every morning and again every evening. If Moses follows all what you've told him, uh -huh. what, are, what are his expectations? The expectation, one, will be to bring up the calf to be a very nice heifer. Yes. The heifer to come on heat, be served, and be a good dairy cow. Wow, Moses, <laughs> you've heard from the expert. The house is ready, you've got the minerals here. Yeah. Now yeah. it's up to you, all right? Yeah. Yes. Good. Yes. <laughs> now that Cecilia knows what is wrong with her soil, we are ready for Peter from Syngenta to tell us how to plant tomatoes. So Peter, here we are, we want to transplant uh, Cecilia's tomatoes. Is there something you tell us before we do that? What we do recommend as a Cecilia is that uh, you need to spray your nursery bed with the uh, Ridomil and Actara to make sure that when you transplant your tomatoes, they are not affected in the early days of transplanting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. which already Cecilia has done. Do you, what do you think about the, the, the seeds that she's already used? Uh, actually, I would uh, congratulate Cecilia for choosing Kirele F1. Mm -hmm. It's a nice variety in comparison to other ordinary varieties. For one, the variety is resistant to diseases, uh, also resistant to some pests. Uh, what we normally talk and train about Kirele is that it is resistant to, to Fusarium wheat. The variety is high yield in comparison with other ordinary varieties. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if Cecilia can tell us is that uh, the ordinary varieties they have been doing before is that uh, they normally harvest for a period of one month, that is 30 days, mm -hmm. and the, that the crop is done. Mm -hmm. But for our variety Kirele, particularly, you harvest for about two and a half to three months. Uh -huh. This ensures that you get a higher, mm -hmm. a higher harvest. So when is the best time to transplant? For tomatoes, mm -hmm. we recommend the farmers to do transplanting between when the, 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 the seedings are 21 to 28 days. Peter, I've seen Cecilia has already done the holes. Uh, is the field ready? Can we start planting? The field is almost ready, but mm -hmm. uh, not very ready. There are some things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. One being, if you look at the, this soil, it's really yes. very much dry. And if we introduce the seedlings the way it is, most of them are going to dry up. So mm -hmm. we have first do the watering. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we shall also spray or drench the holes with mm -hmm. the, an insecticide called Actara mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that we control the field from the early soil pests then we come and plant. Is the spacing the right measurement? Cecilia has really done a good job because mm -hmm. uh, we recommend uh, two by two feet from one plant to other plant, that mm -hmm. is two feet from one row to the other row, two feet. Two feet. So she has really done it correctly. Uh -huh. yeah, even the depth actually it is correct, also it is 15. If uh -huh. you look at it, it's around half a, half a foot, which is right. 15 centimeters, yes. which is very correct. So let's begin. Start by watering the bed. Then, 
Wearing good protective gear, drench each hole with Actara using the directions on the packet. After that, you can plant the tomatoes and remember to use fertilizer and manure mixed with the soil to give plants a good start. Yeah, you have to farm the soil. John told Cecilia and Moses how to improve the cow shell and the animal's health. Now, we have an expert from Unga to tell us how to feed the animals so they can get more milk. So, George, you've had a look at Cecilia's cows. Now, what is your observation? This cow, they need feed supplementation, right. which is key to their growth. When you look at the heifer that is 16 months, it has not reached the desired weight where it can be serviced. How about the milking cow? Uh, looking at the milking cow, um, from what I've already learned is that the cow is not producing to its potential. And the purpose of supplementation is to help this cow reach its potential where it is expected to be. And that is why I would like maybe to show Cecilia on how she can attain the desired maximum potential of its milk production. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Cecilia, could you tell the expert maybe how you feed your cows? I don't give them the, the feed, mm -hmm. but only the fondas. You only use whatever is available within your farm. Yes. So that's why we are here today mm -hmm. to guide you on how you can use the concentrates from Fugo dairy meal in order to improve uh, the performance of your animals. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's start with the hay farm. We have produced what we call Unga young stock pencils that we give a calf when it's four months to eight months. So for three months, we feed using Unga young stock pencils. And the Unga young stock pencils are given to this animal to help it improve its body condition improve the gut weight in preparation for it to be now a bullying heifer. Because for now it's just a heifer. So after that, what next? This calf will have reached eight months old. From there we move to what we call Unga Afia meal. Unga Afia meal, this is a maintenance ration, a product that is formulated to help improve the body condition of the animal. And we want it to attain the desired weight within which it can be served. So we use what we call Unga Afia meal, which is a well-balanced maintenance ration feed for the bullying heifers. And what ratio should I give it? The ratio we give a cow, we look at the body weight. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We normally recommend for every 100 kilo body weight of a cow, we give one kilo of Unga Afia meal. So if your cow is 100 kilos after weighing, you give it one kilo. Mm -hmm. If it increases to 200 kilos, you also increase to two kilo. Okay. So you increase until the cow reaches a maximum of about 350 kilos when it's ready to be served. So the maximum I expect you to supplement with Unga Afia meal is 3.5 kilos maximum. Per day? Per day. Per cow per day. Okay. Yeah. So how can a farmer measure? Or how does he measure or she measure? Since we don't have uh, weighing scales in each and every farm, yes. there is a conventional weigh band right. that you can get from reputable agrovets around town. Uh, what you do, you mm -hmm. take the weigh band, mm -hmm. tie it round the girth of an animal, right. yeah, on the front legs up to the hump. And then when you look at it, whatever you read on the weighing band at that point where they are meeting, right. that automatically gives you the weight of that animal. Now, for the milking cow, what you need to do, you look at your animal and its potential. First, you have to measure the quantity of milk you get from each animal. And we only recommend supplementation when an animal is giving you more than five liters. So first, when you are doing the milking, what you need to do is weigh the milk. What is the quantity you are getting? And then you subtract your five liters which do not need supplementation. Anything that remains, then we use the Fugo dairy meal to supplement. On what ratio will I use this Fugo? On the Fugo dairy meal, we recommend that for every two liters of milk, you get above five liters. You give one kilo of Fugo dairy meal. 
So if a cow is giving you seven liters, then we recommend you only give it one kilo of dairy milk. If it is giving you nine liters, we recommend two kilos of dairy milk. We are ready to leave Sicilia and Moses to put their lessons into practice. Moses and Cecilia, it's been great being with you and I hope you've enjoyed the shape up. Have you enjoyed the shape up, Cecilia? Exactly. Are you I'm excited? Very much. <laughs> I'm very grateful. Moses, I hope you have enjoyed too. All right, great. Where are you going? Uh, Moses is taking me to see the other farm. Okay, well, it's been a great show here on Chamba Shape Up.